Big dokes. I've got one question and one question only for y'all. Do y'all think Derrick Henry, Christian McCaffrey, James Robinson will combine to score three total touchdowns? Derrick Henry versus Jacksonville. James Robinson on the flip side versus Tennessee. Christian McCaffrey versus Denver. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know Christian McCaffrey is probably out. I'm, I film the video you're watching on Thursday. This clip is on Thursday. Right after we just heard, Chris McCaffrey's probably out. So rest in peace to, rest in peace to just fucking everything and everyone, man. Very depressing, very depressing, but life must go on. The rankings must be updated. And I threw Mike Davis into the rankings as an RB1, give or take. Half PPR, I got him up at RB13. So he's right ahead of James Conner. He's one spot behind David Montgomery. In full PPR, I got him all the way up at running back 10 because I think if C-Mac is out, if DJ Moore is out, depending on Curtis Samuel's status, there's a good chance Mike Davis catches like 72 dump offs again. So I like him a little bit more in PPR than I do in standard. Standard, he'll probably be around RB uh, 14, 13, something like that. They did start to take a little bit of work off his plate each week that went by that Christian McCaffrey was out. So still think he gets a ton of work. Still think he catches a ton of passes, whether or not they're on the goal line, kind of like a coin flip. Uh, so pretty much fuck everything at this point. Bike to the video. Beautiful matchups, beautiful players, beautiful scoring opportunities, receiving touchdowns, rushing touchdowns. If they combine to score three touchdowns or more, we're paying your mortgage. Monkeyknifefight.com. The best, the quickest, the easiest, the most fun, enjoyable, fantasy point friendly games on the internet. Player prop games, monkeyknifefight.com. If you throw $10 into your account to bet $10 onto this game, one, you're going to one and a half X your money. If you want to get crazy and you want to say those three are going to combine for four touchdowns, you're going to three X your money. Okay. So you put $10 down when you use the promo code BDGE to sign up on monkeyknifefight.com. Monkey knife fight exactly how you would spell it and so it's an unnormal enormal what's the not what's the opposite of normal but like throwing a preface to the word normal an irregular no it's whatever it's a very irregular name of a website but the spelling is regular okay monkeyknifefight.com use promo code bdge when you deposit and you're going to get double whatever you put down up to 50 so you put down 10 you get 20 you put down 20 you get 40 you put down 50 you get 100 and then you could throw it on derrick henry james robinson christian mccaffrey to pay your mortgage also if you don't like one of these players or you're concerned about christian mccaffrey getting hurt you could always swap him out for david montgomery fantastic matchup this week you dalvin cook tyree kill any of these guys mike evans got the fucking eye of the tiger right now with tom brady whatever you want to do just pick three players Run it. Oh, he's got to be from different team. What are you talking about? Whatever. Monkeyknifefight.com. Promo code BDGE will double your deposit. Let's get into thy rankings. All right. Let me give you all a proper entrance. What's cracking? Big dogs. A little machine gun dog action on you. Welcome, bike, to the channel. Welcome, bike, to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is BDGE. Big dogs got to eat fantasy football. It is Friday. We actually haven't done this video in a couple weeks, I feel like. But normally, every Friday, we do rankings. We talk about our running back rankings. We talk about our wide receiver rankings. And we look where I'm a little lighter, where I'm a little heavier on certain guys as compared to the ECR, the expert consensus rankings. All of my rankings every single week go up on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash BDGE. Let's talk about tucking our shirts in because y'all are not doing it enough. Okay. Every video I sit here and I yell at you for two or three minutes as an intro. And then some asshole goes into the comment section and says, fantasy football video starts at three minutes and 15 seconds. And I always say, no, it starts at fucking zero seconds. Cause all of this is very important. The most important part of your week when you begin your week is tucking your fucking shirt in. I'm going to do it with a belt with jeans on. This is unprecedented territory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You call that thing a penis? I get it. Whatever. Go fuck yourselves. So, before we begin, tuck your shirt in. Stop yelling. Now let's eat. This 
speaking of stop yelling, some of y'all have listened to, I have a secondary podcast called Why You Yelling. You could find it on, on iTunes, on Spotify, on Stitcher, on wherever the fuck podcasts happen. It's not a YouTube version yet. Uh, something I started a few months ago, but we're getting bike into it. As soon as the off season kicks bike up, we will be running that almost daily. It's one of my favorite podcasts to do. It has nothing to do with fantasy football. It has to do with really documenting what's going on with the brand. But my thoughts on different marketing perspectives around the world and pop culture and what's going on right now, one of the coolest things I came across the last episode we put out was about Trevor Bauer, the free agent MLB Cy Young pitcher and how he's attacking the free agent market. His agent, extremely savvy. They're actually running Instagram and Facebook ads to promote him in the offseason to different fan bases. So I went in and I broke that down and from a marketing and like business and creative perspective, I thought it was super fucking interesting. So if you guys are interested in that side of things, you know, just like business and, and overall that, that bullshit, you know, cause that's one of my passions and the, that stuff. I like to put content out. Y'all can check it out. Why are you yelling? If you leave a rating and review, probably going to give, I, I think I'm going to give some, uh, something away. I'm going to give one of these crew necks away. Actually. And these are premium. This shit cost me like $50 just to make for y'all. So, I'm going to give away a crew neck, BDGE crew neck for any of y'all that go subscribe, leave a rating and review on the Why You Yelling podcast. Make sure it's a good review, something from the heart. Listen to the episode and let me know what you think about it. Give me an honest, transparent feed bike of that podcast. And then y'all can listen to this podcast. So let's get into it. The running back situation for this week. Uh, the story is basically you got your studs at the top. Some of them have good matchups. Some of them have shitty matchups, but you're starting them regardless. You know, the Derrick Henrys we kind of talked about, James Robinsons, C-Mac, assuming the thigh is not acting up right now, uh, Aaron Jones, Dalvin Cook, those guys. And then you have like the low-end RB1s and the high-end RB2s who get the workload. And most of them have really, really, really good matchups this week as well. So they should be efficient on those workloads. Again, if you want the, I'm not going to go through every single running back and wide receiver in my rankings. If you want the full list of them, patreon.com forward slash BDGE. But you start around running back eight with Chris Carson against the Jets. They are basically two touchdown favorites in this one. Carson has not been playing his full slate of snaps, and they said he's less than 100%. He's going to be limited at practice, but he'll continue to get stronger and stronger. And just being a part of this backfield, just being a starter in this backfield with Hopefully a pissed off Russell Wilson. I don't even know if he actually gets pissed off. He's kind of a guy with, you know, he for someone who calls himself Mr. Unlimited. Unlimited. He literally has like one emotion and it's just being boring as fuck. But that tends to lead to good offensive success for Seattle. It hasn't as of late, but this is the get right game. This is the get right game if I've ever seen one. Two touchdown favorites. Chris Carson should easily get into the end zone. He might be a good touchdown dance guy on monkey knife fight this week. So you have Chris Carson, RB8. Then we skip to RB10. We have Jonathan Taylor against the Raiders. Jonathan Taylor's getting a lot of snaps, getting a lot of touches. He's kind of rolling into that mojo that we wished he had at the beginning of the year. Go against the Raiders, who are just getting chewed up by every offensive position. Fourth most fantasy points allowed to the running back position. You have Zeke at running back 11 against the Bengals, who are bottom 12 in terms of fantasy points allowed to the running back. That's just a, a game where the game script won't get away in either direction. So uh, I like Zeke to continue to get fed. If it turns out that this calf injury thing that just kind of popped up on the radar earlier this morning is serious, obviously Tony Pollard becomes a very, 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 very viable high-end RB2, if not an RB1. But we have Zeke at RB11, right behind him, Wayne Gallman at RB12 against Arizona. He's just been an absolute stud. If you picked him up off the wire weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks ago, he has been filling in as like a fantastic, one of the best flex plays in fantasy right now. So you fire him up as a top 12 guy. David Montgomery right behind him at RB13 versus Houston. Second most fantasy points allowed to the running back position on the season. Right behind him, James Conner, RB14 versus Buffalo. And then Gaskin versus Kansas City. So you have a lot of guys getting a lot of work and very good matchups. Now, David Montgomery, I have down at RB13. You could probably argue him to put higher. I think consensus has him all the way up at running back eight. But that's a little high for me for a guy that doesn't have much... I don't want to say much upside because he has biked by games of 20 plus fantasy points now, but I don't know, you know, if he can show a consistent ceiling and I guess he's done it two games in a row, but we've been here before with David Montgomery. That's the whole thing. That's the whole fucking thing about it, right? David Montgomery, two touchdowns on Sunday. And you've probably heard me say this already a couple times this week. If you've watched our other pieces of content, two touchdowns on Sunday, he had two rushing touchdowns in his prior 18 games. Okay. And they've still got Mitch Trubisky at quarterback. Like, he's always a threat to take one of these goal line carries or one of these rollout plays for a rushing touchdown instead. 
I'm having a hard time trusting Demont, but the matchup is beautiful. Again, he's he's already 13, so he's going to be in your lineup. But I'm just saying, I'm just saying, he's five spots below ECR rankings in my lineup. Then we've got Ronald, Ronald McDonald Jones. Okay, I have him down at running back 20, which is six spots lower than consensus. People have him all the way up at running back 14. That's way too aggressive for me, given the fact that all these other options have great matchups, and I trust the fact that they're going to get these matchups or they're going to get the workload in these matchups. And I've, I've talked about this before, but the splits for Ronald Jones, when he's playing a top, this is top 16, but I meant to, I think I meant to make it top 20, but the numbers are not that much different on the left side are against top 16 running defenses. So just top half, not like elite, but just top half. You could see the stark, 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 stark difference. Viagra bonus, stark difference of his production against top defenses, against top running defenses versus shitty defenses, okay? Now, Minnesota is definitely not like a fantastic running defense. They're not someone to be necessarily scared of, but they're not terrible. They're 16th in fantasy points allowed to the running back position. And then you look at the flip side of things, like throwing the ball. All their wide receivers are finally healthy. Chris Godwin's got the pin out. We'll talk about him in a minute. All the wide receivers are finally healthy. Tom Brady coming off the bye week. I think he'll he'll probably put up some fucking big numbers. And if there's anywhere to attack the Minnesota Vikings, it is through the air. So I'm a little less bullish on Ronald Jones. Like, yeah, Bruce Arians came out and said, like, we need to get him 20 touches. But, like, he's also come out and praised Ronald Jones 50 times already. If he drops a pass, Leonard Fournette could come in, break off a 12-yard run, and then it's Leonard Fournette's game for the rest of the game. Like, that's just how that backfield is going to work. We've, we're 14 weeks in. I don't know why we need to keep explaining this logic to people. So Ronald Jones down on running back 20, RB2, but I'm not, like, super, 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 super excited about it. The other thing to consider here is... Kendricks, linebacker for the Vikings. Very, 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 very good piece of this defense is 50-50 to suit up on Sunday. So if he doesn't play, that's going to be an upgrade for Ronald Jones. If he does play, it'll be a slight downgrade to this to Ronald Jones because the rushing defense gets a little bit of a boost up there. So um, depending on what happens there, Ronald Jones will move up and down my rankings. Again, if you want the updated rankings in real time, whatever, they're posted right now already. They were posted yesterday before every Thursday night football game. Patreon.com forward slash BDGE. Right behind Ronald Jones, running back 20. We've got Gio at running back 21. And uh, he's been pretty terrible as of late. Like, honestly, fucking awful for fantasy. But Joe Mixon, again, is ruled out. This is the first time in a while that I've actually been kind of confident in Gio for a fantasy matchup. Like, in other leagues, I've only played him if I've been forced to play him over the last two or three weeks because the offense is obviously shite without Joe Burrow under quarterback. Now they're missing Jonah Williams at left tackle. So they've got a ton of problems on offense, of course. But this matchup is just too good to pass up on. Uh, against the Dallas defense, I just think Geo should be in your RB2 slots and a flex spot at worst. Now, dropping down the rankings a little bit, down to 30. If Josh Jacobs is out again this week, which I expect him to be, hasn't practiced yet, we'll have another week of Devontae Booker, who split snaps pretty much 50-50 with Jalen Rashard, but he took most of the touches. They also play against the Indianapolis defense, which is not an inviting defense by any means. I have at RB30, which is exactly where ECR consensus has him. 30, 31, 32. Devontae Booker, Ty Johnson, and who's my 32? Who's my 32? Don't fucking leave me yet. While I'm looking for it, scroll down, hit that thumbs up button, please, because I love you, and hopefully you love me. Devin Singletary, running back 32. So we have Booker, Johnson, Singletary, 30, 31, 32, exactly where expert consensus ranking has them. So Devontae Booker, again, tough matchup, splitting the snaps, uh, but he's probably like a floor play just in terms of volume, not production or efficiency, though, which is kind of the worst fucking types of players. You have Ty Johnson, who is a high upside guy, but this is all going to depend on Frank Gore's status, right? He's got a Conco, got conco last last week. Now they're like, oh, we're going to have him in a limited practice. Like, yeah, we should be fucking running out Frank Gore, who's 45 years old, who's probably like dead with another concussion. But we're going to make sure he practices. We're probably going to make him take a couple fucking licks to the dome, and we'll get him back on the field. We'll give him the 12 carries right up the middle. We don't give him outside stuff. We don't give him passes. We just give him straight up the middle, head to ass, head to center's ass, head to the head of the fucking linebackers. Let's just kill Frank Gore while we're out here, okay? It's going to be a death a wrongful death suit filed against the Jets when Frank Gore gets conked one more time. But I digress. Ty Johnson, 31, depending on Frank Gore. If Frank Gore's out, if Frank Gore is out, Ty Johnson, again, high upside guy, but against a tough Seattle run defense. Though they're 14-point dogs, Ty Johnson could be very involved in the passing game. He is uh, an athletic guy. If you look at his player profiler uh, stats, 
you know, he's got enough size, got enough speed, can make big plays. Last week we saw him turn 22 carries into 104 yards and a tug. So I don't hate him here, but move to Devin Singletary and he's kind of like Devontae Booker where he's got a volume floor, but not an efficiency or production floor. He's been getting a lot of work as of late and he's looked pretty good, but against his Pittsburgh defense, you know, again, we don't know if he's going to get any goal line work. We don't know if he's going to catch passes. We don't know. We don't know shit. We don't know shit. Okay. Welcome to fantasy football. Uh, Devin Singletary is just not a guy that I have any confidence in. So I'll rank him down here, but like, I don't know. I guess I don't hate throwing him into my lineup, but there are definitely, according to me, technically 31 better options at the running bike position. One of them might be DeAndre Swift. One of them might be DeAndre Swift, man. I don't know. Matt Patricia's gone, man. Matt Patricia was a fucking problem. Matt Patricia walked past his fish market. Do you know what I'm saying? Took a deep breath. He said, good morning, running back by committees. He's gone. He's gone. Are we getting a running back by committee anymore back there? I don't fucking know. But it doesn't look like it. Daryl Bevel. Daryl Bevel's interim head coach. Daryl Bevel, workhorse. Workhorse guy. Adrian Peterson. Marshawn Lynch. Going back historically. Adrian Peterson again, unfortunately. Swift, I don't know what the fucking deal with Swift is. I don't know if anyone knows what the deal with Swift is. He's clear from concussion protocol. Has an illness. But like he had like seven days to recover from an illness. And then just didn't recover. And now he's limited at practice. Like... Something fishy, speaking of fish markets and Matt Patricia's fucking stupid ass, something fishy's going on with DeAndre Swift, man, and I don't like it. I don't know what's going on there, but him still being limited at practice makes me nervous, okay? They're playing against Green Bay. Darrell Bevel's first game as the interim head coach, Adrian Peterson saw 76% of the running back touches, okay? I think that's how they want to operate, but like I don't know if they can give Swift that t- type of a workload when he's missed the last three weeks two weeks, four weeks, whatever the fuck he's missed. So I'm a little bit nervous about Swift. Like right now, I think he's maybe like RB 25, 26, but he's going to swing wildly in my rankings, depending on the reports that we hear leading up to the game day. So limited, I'd imagine he'll probably be limited in the game, which kind of kills both of these players, both Swift and Adrian Peterson. If Swift is out, AP is going to shoot up my board. He's going to get a lot of run. He's going to get a lot of play time and he's going to get carries against a very, very soft Green Bay run defense. So keep a close eye on where the rankings move with Swift and AP. Keep a close eye on the reports for DeAndre Swift. I don't fucking know what's going on over there in Detroit with DeAndre Swift. So he makes me a little bit nervous. Let's talk about wide receivers. Let's talk about wide receivers. Let's check my phone and see if we got any interesting updates. Wix.com emailing me. I fucking hate Wix. If any of you guys create websites, if any of you guys... um, Yes, create websites like Squarespace, WordPress, Wix. I could not recommend Wix less. I hate Wix. They stink and don't ever create a website on Wix. End of story. Wide receivers expected to get shadow coverage. Pop the chart up on the screen for me, Robert. Make sure you're following Robert on Twitter at NotScottBDGE or at NotScott underscore BDGE. One of them two fucking handles. He'll throw it up on the screen for you. So there are three... Wide receivers expected, projected to get shadow coverage this week per PFF. Robert Woods, James Bradbury. That is very wrong. I have the wrong fucking chart. LA is going against the Patriots. Oh, so it's probably flipped. Okay. So we have Robert Woods getting Stephon Gilmore. We have DeAndre Hopkins getting James Bradbury. We have Darius Slayton getting Patrick Peterson. So just flip Robert Woods and, and DeAndre Hopkins' name, and you will have a D Hop, James Bradbury. Shadow coverage matchup. James Bradbury has been fucking awesome. As you can see to the right of the chart, he is the 12th highest graded coverage cornerback per PFF out of 125, which is top 10 percentile, of course. He's number 10 per player profiler. And if you go to playerprofiler.com, you can type in any wide receiver and you will see the cornerback matchup that they have absolutely free on the website, as well as the ranking and the rating for that specific cornerback. Now you have Robert Woods getting shadowed by, expected to get shadowed by Gilmore, but I highly, highly, highly doubt that happens because the wide receivers in LA move around so much. And uh, I don't know, Gilmore's been good this year, but hasn't been like elite Gilmore defensive player of the year kind of Gilmore guy. So it's not a a matchup necessarily that you need to shy away from. Uh, Woods and Cup are both getting wildly involved in this Rams passing offense. So uh, you you still start both of them as like wide receiver two, probably more like low end wide receiver two-ish kind of guys. And you have Darius Slayton and Patrick Peterson. This one doesn't really matter. Uh, Because Darius Slayton is not someone that you want in your lineup if Colt McCoy is playing. Do we have any update on Daniel Jones? Let me check real time for you. (music) 
limited in practice Wednesday. Jones missed last week's upset win versus the Seahawks, but he's expected to return this week for the first. Okay, so he's returning. Makes the uh, makes the matchup for Darius Slayton a little bit more intriguing because Patrick Peterson's been okay. You know, he's been kind of average this year. He's not Patrick Peterson like he used to be. So Darius Slayton's not. I mean, he's he was kind of terrible with Daniel Jones in the lineup weeks ago as well. So he's not a guy I'm looking to start. He's he's kind of like a desperate flex play at this point. Robbie Anderson is not a desperate flex play at this point. They go against the Denver Broncos. I'm almost positive they're going to be without DJ Moore. I'm almost positive that Curtis Samuel will be like a game time decision. DJ Moore tested positive. Curtis Samuel was a close contact. So it's possible that they miss that they miss both of these guys in this game. More likely, Curtis Samuel probably suits up. So one, you like the fact that Anderson's going to take over as a number one, but more so on the flip side of the ball, like Denver's cornerbacks are all dead. They have Bryce Callahan on the IR. AJ Boye just got suspended for fucking shooting up steroids. And uh, I forget who the third cornerback is, but he also got hurt. So they're running like completely backups right now at this point. And Robbie Anderson is going to fucking toast one of these dudes for a bomb this week. All right. Put that fucking on paper, put it in an envelope, send it to the IRS and tell them to fucking juice up your tax returns because Robbie Anderson's going to the cribbo. Love Robbie Anderson up at like running back or wide receiver 15-ish for me. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is kind of interesting. Um, I expect Davis White to stay on Chase Claypool actually for a majority of this game. I don't know why, but opposing teams have put their shadow coverage guys on Chase Claypool more often than anyone else. And it's like Deontay Johnson, wide receiver, 13 in the rankings every week. Don't move it. Don't shift it. Just keep him there. Keep it steady. He will keep producing there. Every once in a while, he has a bad game because he makes a couple drops or whatever. But 80% of the time, he's putting you up. Deontay Johnson, wide receiver 13-esque type numbers. Best wide receiver on that team. I don't even think it's a, a close call. Claypool's down like wide receiver 27. Juju, probably wide receiver like 20 to 21-ish. Um, but like he's just, I don't know. He's, he's more of a floor play. Deontay Johnson gives you a floor and a ceiling. So love them. Tampa Bay. Uh, obviously Mike Evans is a must start at this point. Him and Tom Brady have developed really good chemistry. And despite the finger thing, Chris Godwin will be good. They're, they're, they took the pin out. He's not going to practice today. I don't think he's going to practice tomorrow, but he should be, he should be 100% full go for Sunday's game. And they play against the Vikings. As I said, I don't know how, how much success they're going to have on the ground against the Vikings, but the passing offense could do fucking wonders. And Godwin gets by far the easiest matchup on this team against their rookie, Jeff Gladney in the slot. Jeff Gladney. Number nine in yards allowed per route covered among 125 cornerbacks. Number nine. Number four in fantasy points allowed per route covered on the year. Chris Godwin should have a fucking field day. So should Brashad the God Perriman, okay? Denzel Mims just ruled out. Surprisingly ruled out. I had no idea this was, this was happening. They take on Seattle. Seattle has allowed the number one most receiving yards to opponents wide receivers on the year 3,877 a ridiculous amount they have allowed the second most plays of 20 plus yards 46 that's over three a game it's almost four a game Rashad Perriman you look over the last seven weeks okay so what this offense has really been over the last seven weeks Perriman's average depth of target is second in the NFL second of all wide receivers in the NFL he's averaged over 20 yards per reception in that time span and during that time span he has a near 24% target share and 35% of the air yards. Absolutely love Perriman this week with Denzel Mims out. With Denzel Mims in, I was debating, I was debating not even bringing it up because I was like, I don't want to sound like a fucking idiot and talk about Mims and Perriman and be like, oh, they're good starts. So is Jamison Crowder against Seattle. But now with Mims out, like I think Perriman and Jamison Crowder should both, without a doubt, be in your lineup this week. Jarvis Landry, he's a guy I've been high on for the last you know month or so. He was a guy that was probably my favorite buy high candidate or buy low candidate for the second half of the year based on the matchups. And then the weather got the best of this Browns offense and things kind of slowed down. But then he's been picking it up last couple weeks. He's fucking bite, but he's not gonna be bite this week, okay? Uh, he's down to like wide receiver 36 for me. And it's because they play Baltimore and he's gonna see all of Marlon Humphrey. Marlon Humphrey, very, 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 very good. I just don't think Jarvis Landry is a good enough football player to beat really good opposing cornerbacks. So I don't think he's going to have a complete dud game, but I could see more of like a seven for 45 type game out of Landry without getting into the end zone. That's fine for PPR, but you could find players with a lot higher of a ceiling in the rankings or even on, like you probably find Perriman. I play Perriman over Jarvis Landry this week. So I don't love that matchup, but if we're going a little bit deeper, we're going a little bit deeper than Brashad than Jarvis Landry. Let's talk about Alan Lazard. Okay. I haven't talked about him in a while because he's been making his way bike from that seven week injury. Seven-week injury, he finally got onto the field in week 11. 
Okay. And we've seen MVS's snap percentage drop in three consecutive weeks since Lazard has come bike. And the two were almost equal last week. Okay. In terms of snap percentage for the team. So I expect Lazard to start and leapfrogging him in terms of the snap counts, become the wide receiver two in this offense. And now he gets a fantastic matchup against the Lions cornerback, Justin Coleman. Now Lazard's running over 50% of his routes from the slot, which we love to see. Coleman has allowed an 80% catch rate to his covering receivers. That's the third highest rate in the entire NFL, okay? 80% of the catch, 80% of the targets are caught against Justin Coleman. I mean, obviously, Lazard is no short thing. He's down at like wide receiver 42 or some shit for me, you know, because Adams is going to go off. This could be a game. Uh, they're seven and a half point favorites, which is actually surprising to me that they weren't more heavily favored. But they're in Detroit, I guess. Staff, I don't, I don't really know what the line is. That's a fishy line. That's one of those lines where you're like, it's too good to be true. I have to take the Packers, and then the Lions end up covering by like three points or some shit. But seven and a half point favorites. It's possible that the running backs in Green Bay, Aaron Jones and Jamal Williams, combined for like forty plus touches. That's definitely part of the outcome. MVS maybe just simply catches one of the deep passes that would otherwise have been Alan Lazard's or something. But if you're looking for a deep play at wide receiver. I don't hate Alan Lazard this week. I really, I really don't. I think coming back from the injury, he's getting more and more play time. You want to be attached to Aaron Rodgers, and he's just a good athlete, good player overall. And I think this is the week that we see a fantastic matchup for him, and uh, something something good comes out of this for Alan Lazard. So he's a nice wide receiver, three, four-ish flex play guy for you. Oh, that's about all I got for the running backs and the wide receivers this week in terms of guys that I think stand out to me or guys you could take advantage of or guys you can sit your ass down on the bench. Uh, let me know in the comments some guys that you think you're probably ranked a little bit higher on than ECR consensus or guys that you think I'm being a fucking idiot about and you should not have in your lineups or vice versa that you need to have in your lineups, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's what we got for y'all today. So I will leave you with a few things. Make sure you go listen to Why You Yelling. Anyone who goes to the podcast on iTunes, it'll be linked right down below in the description. You just go down there, click it, and your phone will automate. It's beautiful what technology does these days. Your phone will automatically open up iTunes, the podcast store, whatever the fuck it's called. You just click subscribe, leave a rating and review on it. Listen to the last podcast. I would appreciate that. Leave a rating and review on it, and you will automatically be entered in to win a Big Dogs premium crew neck. They come in black. They come in gray. They come in maybe white. I don't know. Go check out the store too. Bigdogsfantasy.com. It's all listed there. Uh, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. We're doing fantasy stuff and bullshit stuff all off season. Monkeyknifefight.com. Go pay the mortgage. Go play the player prop games. James Robinson, Derek Henry, Christian McCaffrey scoring 17 tugs between the three of them. Fact, not opinion. That's it. I love y'all. Robert, thank you for the edit. I'll see you on Patreon live stream tomorrow. Patreon.com forward slash BDG.